John Keats was an English poet prominent in the second generation of Romantic poets. His poems had been published for only four years when he died of tuberculosis at age of 25. They were indifferently received, but his fame grew rapidly after his death. In 1819, John Keats published a very phenomenal poem, Ode to Nightingale. Uh, this poem explores wonders of life and death. Uh, John Keats tries to relate life's sufferings to the briefness of the bird's song. Um, the poem's popularity mainly lies in the fact that it represents things related to life, like art, literature and nature. The poem explores the two main issues. The first is a connection between agony and joy, and the second is a connection between life and death. The poet very artistically draws a comparison between natural and imaginative world, the world of Nightingale. He tries to seek comfort, harmony in his imaginative world, but uh, like uh, consequences of his uh, real life make me make him comfort uh, confront the real world, and ultimately. He found the only one escape it is it's like uh death because of only death is a way uh, where we cannot feel the pain and uh, the final we got that the offer payment escape from the pain is the death my heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though of hemlock I had drunk, or emptied some dull opiate to the drains. One minute passed and Lizzie Woods had sung. Tis not through envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness, that thou, like wicked dryad of the trees, in some melodious plot of beaching green and shadows numberless, singest of summer in full-throated ease. Oh, for a draught of vintage, that has been cooled along each in a deep delved earth, tasting of flora in a country green, dance and Provencal song and sunburnt mirth. Oh, for a beaker full of the warm souse, full of the true, the blushful hippocrene with bearded bubbles winking at the brim, and purple stained mouth, that I might drink and leave the world unseen, and with thee fade away into the forest dim. Fade far away, the soul, and quite forget what thaw among the leaves has never known, the weariness, the fever, and the fret. Sure, where men feet and hair each other groan, where palsy shakes a few sad, last gray hairs, where yours grows pale and spectre thin and dies, where but the thing is to be full of sorrow and leaden eyed despairs, where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes, or a new love pine at them beyond tomorrow. Away, away, where I will fly to thee, not charioted by Bacchus and his parts, but on the viewless wings of poetry, throw the dull brain perplexes and retards, already with thee tender as a night, and haply the queen moon is on her throne, clustered around by all her starry face, but here there is no light, save what from heaven is with the breezes blown, through vergeries glooms and winding mossy ways. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, nor what soft in seas hangs up on the booth, but in embalmed darkness gets its sweet, where with the seasonable once and those, the grass, the thicket, and the fruit tree wild, wild, the whole thorn and the pastoral elantine, fast fading violets covered up in leaves, and mid males, eldest child, the coming musk rose, full of devy wine, the murmurous hunt of flies on summer ice. Darling, I listen and for many a time 
I have been a half in love with easyful death, called him soft names, in many a music dream to take into the air my quiet breeze no more than ever seems it reached to die, to ease upon the midnight with no pain, while through art pouring forth the soul abroad in such an ecstasy she would so think and i have ears in vain to sigh high requiem become a sot two was not born for this immortal bird no hungry generation treat to tree down the voice i hear this passing night was heard in ancient days by emperor and clown perhaps the self-same song that found the past Throw the herd over us when sick for home she stood in tears amid the ailing groan. The same that times have charmed magic casements opening on the foam of perilous seas in fair lands forlorn. Forlorn, the very world is like a bell to tell me back from the tea of my soul self. And you, the fancy cannot chase so well as she a fun to do deceiving elf. And you, and you, the plaintive anthem face. Past the near mirrors, our still stream up the hillside, and now the buried deep in the next valley glades. What is vision or walking dream? Flight in the music to awake asleep. If it's a poem by Joseph Leonard Kipling, written in 1895, Kipling was English journalist, short story writer, uh, poet, and novelist. He was born in India, which inspired much of his work. Kipling in the late 90s and early 20s centuries was among the United Kingdom's most popular writers. In the 1997, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. As the first English language writer uh, to receive the prize at, uh, at 41, its youngest recipient to date. If is an inspirational poem that provides advice on how one should live one's life. Uh, the poem takes the reader through various ways in which the reader can rise above adversity that will almost certainly be thrown one's way at same point. Uh, throughout the poem, uh, the speaker gives reader uh, gives the reader multiple scenarios, uh, negative and positive, uh, along with a glimpse into how one should conduct oneself. If you can keep your head on about you as losing the and, and blaming it on you, if you can't trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good, not talk to wise if you can dream and not make dreams your master if you can seek and not make thousands your aim if you can meet with triumph and disaster and straight those to imposters just the same if you can bear to hear the trust you have spoken twisted by nails to make a trap for fools or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings, and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again at your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your hurt and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither force nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but not too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance from, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, you'll be a man, my son. <laughs>